you know, when you see someone who's healthy, active, um, you know, looks lean, how, how common is it to see that they may be metabolically unhealthy in terms of at least, you know, their, their glucose regulation? Yeah, well, on the, on the glucose side, it's quite frequent, actually. So uh, we have some studies going on with something called continuous glucose monitoring. But backing up a little bit, it's pretty clear that actually 9 out of 10 people have prediabetes, so not yet diabetes, uh, actually have no idea. What that means is their glucose is starting to go out of control. They're not officially class, classified as diabetic yet, but they will be. And, and it turns out that well, 9% of the U.S. population is diabetic, but 33% are pre-diabetic. And most of those pre-diabetic will go on to become diabetic. And yet they have no idea they're pre-diabetic. And so we think actually capturing that information is pretty darn important so that they can start getting their glucose under control long in advance of, of getting full-blown type 2 diabetes. Now, this is something that I would imagine a routine you know, checkup that people do. I mean, maybe they don't do this once a year or twice a year, whether you're getting something like, I guess, would that even be reflected on HbA1c, which is your sort of long-term glucose measurements? And also... Um, you know, if, if there's so many people that have what are pre-diabetes, and maybe you can sort of, I don't know if you can tell us what those levels are and if they're, if it's a pretty hard, I mean, are, is there is there a scale that's kind of sliding or is it like, this is like for sure, if you're within this range, you're, you're pre-diabetic. And also I kind of want to get into, um, you know, which what you've been doing and, and with your, your work at Innovation Lab in terms of like measuring, using continuous glucose monitors, which, you know, a lot of people are now using these days to actually um, inform people about their, their glucose regulation. Continuous glucose monitors are still considered a medical device. For that reason, they are prescribed under the care of a physician. However, increasingly, they're fairly commoditized with companies like NutriSense, January AI, and Levels making them available to virtually anyone through a physician network and selling them usually for around a couple hundred dollars per month, with the most well-known CGM brands being the Dexcoms and the Freestyle Libre. Yeah, so... Um... Well, as far as a, is a range, yeah, there there is. So normally people want to have their glucose at 90 or below, but um, and when it gets over 120, then you're typically classified as, as type 2 diabetic. Uh, and so in between is typically called prediabetes. Uh, they are arbitrary numbers because it's a scale. People, uh, you know, they, you can be in anywhere in that range. So the goal is to keep your, your glucose numbers down but it's actually even more complicated than that because um, people will spike the foods and, and different foods can spike you very much out of control. So, for example, if I eat um, pulled pork, <laughs> believe it or not, that'll send my glucose over 350. It goes totally out of control. So you do want to know what foods do that to you. It turns out that is uh, different for different people. So different foods spike different people. And these continuous glucose monitors, which is one of the things we are, are using in our study, uh, is a great way to measure those. So we can actually dive deeper in on that if you want. It turns out everybody spikes the different foods differently. Some people spike the bread, other people to bananas, other people to pasta. And it's just different with different people. It's thought that at least part of that's due to what's called your microbiome, the, the microbes in your gut that digest your food differently. And, and so we're all different. And so that's why it's really important to get these personal measurements. And that's a big theme of ours. Try to collect big data because everybody's different and those, the, those data will be different for different people. And so understanding people's baseline and then how they're shifting from that baseline is absolutely critical for understanding your health. What do you think about people that are, I mean, obviously using continuous glucose monitors for people that are um, diabetic, type 1 or type 2, or for pre-diabetic. What do you think about for just the general population? I mean, there's a lot of companies now popping up that are, are doing, you know, just that, allowing, you know, just normal people. Like I myself wear one, as you and I have discussed previously in another conversation. Um, and, I, and I've gathered a lot of data, but I, I sort of want to know what your thoughts are. On. Well, I think everybody should wear one. <laughs> now I'm biased. I'm a guy who likes to collect a lot of data <laughs> around these things. But what's really clear comes back to what I was saying before. For pre-diabetics, uh, they have no idea most of the time. They have no idea they're spiking away. And so putting these monitors on, first of all, they discover that. 
but even normal people, it turns out, will be spiking uh, as well. And, and it has to do with the way we, we currently measure glucose dysregulation. We look at final glucose levels like we started talking about or at this hemoglobin A1C, these final levels. But there's actually different ways to have different glucose dysregulation. My own belief is diabetes is probably 50 different diseases. And we lump it all together into one or two, basically, whether you have type one or type two. And the reality is that there's many subtypes. I'm a very unusual type two diabetic, actually. Um, so the, these monitors are great for discovering people who have glucose dysregulation, but it doesn't show up by normal means. They're also phenomenal because, as I say, people spike to different foods. So you get to see what foods you will spike to. And then you can actually personalize your habits. If you spike to bread, for example, well, maybe you want to vo avoid bread and eat other things. And so uh, one of the companies I was involved in founding, that's exactly what they do. They have a food recommender that says, if you, you know, <laughs> this is what you normally spike to, don't eat that when you go to a restaurant, eat something else that won't cause this. And I think getting taught those habits early before you're diabetic is absolutely huge because I think the key is to get things under control before you have diseases. And that's a big theme of ours. Try to catch disease early before symptoms so you can manage it and keep people uh, in, in keep people healthy, basically. We saw one case of a something to a journalist who said he was trying to eat really healthy. He had salmon on a salad every day. And he said, you know, he couldn't think of anything healthier than that. And then his sugar spiked through the roof. And it turns out he had, was, had some balsam salt on it that had sugar in it. And same thing in hindsight, he said, oh, of course. <laughs> but he didn't realize that at the time. We all have these habits that probably have some not so healthy things snuck in there, even when we think we're being perfectly healthy, that you can avoid. So anyway, food food avoidance you know, or, or eating better foods for you is one easy thing to do. Another thing to do is exercise. I know it sounds obvious, but it's very obvious when you're wearing a glucose monitor. In fact, we, we uh, can teach people as part of this uh, app with January AI where you actually eat something. Nearly everybody spikes to rice, by the way. White rice is kind of nasty. Uh, it spikes people. Oh, totally. So does, I avoid it like the plague. <laughs> <laughs> so does cornflakes and milk. Yeah, also pretty nasty, actually. Yeah, so <laughs> that's good. Anyway, so, uh, but, so as one training exercise, you'll eat white rice and then go eat white rice and then do a brisk walk 15 minutes later. And you'd be amazed at how much it suppresses your glucose spikes. So you can actually learn these habits, both just either on your own by wearing a monitor or, or some of these apps that are out there now are, are, and programs are meant to help teach you, help you modify your behavior. So again, you can be healthier. And then the goal is to get in, in healthy habits so that you will be living a healthy life, basically.